Now, it's not just the UK that's in the grip of a migrant crisis. They're having similar problems over in Ireland. And earlier this week, protesters clashed with police while asylum seekers were being taken into a hotel in Roscrea in County Tipperary. The old market town has a population of just over 5,000, but the Racket Hall Hotel is set to provide accommodation for around 160 migrants. Well, to discuss this, I'm joined now by Kevin Moore, who's a commentator on Irish politics. Welcome to the show, Kevin. We Kevin. always seem to talk about the same thing when we talk on this show, and it's once again the Irish people rising up in resistance against what they see as extremely unfair levels of immigration. They're telling us Ireland is full, and yet we have a political class, Leo Varadkar, the Premier, saying nobody in a democracy has the right to to veto who moves into their area and never the twain shall meet. You've explained it very well there. I mean, the, the nub of this issue is that you've got a kind of elite Dublin opinion, the kind of elite, you know, the political class in Dublin. So the government is comprised of three political parties, Fianna Foil, Fianna Gael, and the Greens. And it's taken a very lax approach to immigration um, over, over the last few years. And that elite opinion is set against public opinion in Ireland, which is now saying three in four voters are saying we've had enough, really. Um, we were quite happy to take in some Ukrainians. We're quite happy to take in a certain level of migration. 85% of Irish people survey said they'd be quite happy to live next door to a Muslim family. So within reason, people are saying we can deal with some migration. But the scale of it that we're now facing is just too much. And we've got to have a lot less of it. But what the Irish government is doing is trying to palm off its dispersal policy onto all these small Irish towns all across rural Ireland. 12% of Irish hotel rooms at the moment are taken out of capacity to, 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 because, because of asylum seekers and what have you. There's whole areas of Ireland for tourism reasons you can't even get to anymore. So, so these people are saying, look, enough is enough. It's having a really bad effect on us. Ireland is also in the grip of a major housing crisis. Not mm. enough houses being very high rents, very high house prices. These, all these issues are collapsing together and people are saying, we've had enough. And, and it's that point of there is no democratic consent for the mm. scale and the pace of migration that Ireland is dealing with. And that's, that's really starting to grind now, I think, with Irish voters. And Kevin, immigration to Ireland rose by 32% year on year to, to more than 140,000. And locals there are saying there are five GPs in the town. They can't get appointments. They're all full. Um, they can't get doctor's appointments. Patients are on trolleys in Limerick's hospitals. And there are 33 children in classroom sizes. They're simply saying the area cannot cope. They're not being far right or racist. They're saying we cannot accept the numbers like this. I mean, there'll be a lot of viewers listening to us talk about this and think, well, actually, a lot of these issues are quite germane to, to what goes on in Britain as well. But the, the pace of what's happening in, in Ireland kind of dwarfs anything that we're used to. Ireland's got a population, Southern Ireland, the Republic of Ireland, has got a population of about 5 million people. And for the second year in a row, it's had immigration levels at 100,000. Now, you don't need to be a mathematician to work out that within one generation, you could have a situation where every other person in Southern Ireland is not Irish born. So, so this, this is a profound change. As I say, without that fundamental democratic consent, there's a general election coming this autumn and immigration is gonna be wrapped, wrapped, wrapped right up there as a top concern of Irish voters. And it's gonna become a very, very noisy 2024 on this issue in Irish, in Irish politics. But you know, fundamentally, you can't, as I say, you can't have the public in one place and the political elite in another place. And particularly when that political elite just is not listening to what people are saying when they've got very, very practical cons considerations around access to public services, access to, 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 um, to jobs and access to housing, where there is a housing crisis as well. So it's all collapsing in on, on and creating a, a right old political mess. OK, Kevin Moore, thank you very much for joining us on that topic. And in fact, it's not a case of them not even agreeing. The Premier, Leo Varadkar, openly and repeatedly calls anybody who, pro who protests or resists this as far right. And it's causing huge, huge division in the country. And I just don't know what they're going to do about it. It really makes it seem like a tea party, what's going on over here. And that's saying something.